The terrible end of Annas and Caiaphas, the Sadducees who killed Jesus. In the dark pages of history, we find the terrible end of Annas and Caiaphas, the Sadducees who killed Jesus. Today, we invite you to embark on a journey into the past, unraveling the secrets and intrigues that surrounded these influential figures. Their lives and actions shaped a pivotal chapter in human history, and through this account, we can reflect on valuable lessons. Hello, dear subscribers of the Bible Stories channel. We invite you to share this message so that others may also learn from this story. Leave your like and share your thoughts in the comments below. Let's create a space for reflection and learning together, exploring the events that shaped our world. Annas was appointed high priest between the years 6 and 15 after Christ by the Roman governor Quirinius, until the Roman procurator Valerius Gratus removed him from the position and later granted it to his son-in-law Caiaphas. After that, Annas witnessed several members of his family becoming high priests. In this video, we will be talking about the life and death of Annas and Caiaphas. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and activate the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. Palestine had a head of government that left little room for maneuver for local leaders. This led to a complex relationship between Jewish religious leaders responsible for maintaining order in the Temple of Jerusalem while Roman authorities sought to maintain political control. At that time, the Temple of Jerusalem was the spiritual and religious heart of Jewish life. Every year, thousands of pilgrims came there to offer sacrifices and fulfill their religious duties. This gave it powerful symbolism and high political value to those who controlled the Temple. In this context of Roman occupation and high religious tension, Annas and Caiaphas emerged as influential religious leaders both belonging to the powerful Sadducee sect. The Sadducees and Pharisees had different views of the scriptures. For example, the Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection of the dead or the spiritual world, while the Pharisees did believe in the resurrection and the spiritual world. The Sadducees tended to be wealthy and bought the most powerful positions from the Romans. The majority of the high priests were Sadducees, and they held most of the positions in the Sanhedrin. This is why Annas and Caiaphas, being Sadducees, managed to occupy the position of high priests. This made them central figures in Jewish religious life and gave them power and authority over the affairs of the temple. The relationship between Jewish and Roman religious leaders was complex and often tense. The Roman occupation generated a constant fear of revolt and loss of privileges. This tension provides the backdrop for understanding the actions and decisions of Annas and Caiaphas especially in relation to their participation in the arrest and trial of Jesus. So with this historical context in mind, we will continue to explore who Annas and Caiaphas were. Annas was appointed high priest in 6 AD during the rule of Quirinius, the governor of Syria, and held the position until approximately 15 AD. During his time as high priest, Annas established a system of succession in his family, ensuring continuity and religious power. His control over the high priesthood gave him considerable power in the Temple of Jerusalem. He was responsible for overseeing rituals, administering sacrifices, and enforcing religious laws. This position not only made him a religious leader, but also a key political figure, as the Temple was a center of power and control in Jewish society. Annas also controlled the Temple tax and the currency exchange. In Luke 19.45, we see that Jesus drove them out of the Temple, accusing them of turning it into a den of robbers, profaning religion. The business of animal sellers and money lenders in the temple was the most profitable business in the city. The Jewish Talmud states that Annas's house was cursed, rich and unscrupulous, along with the corrupt leaders of the priesthood whose presence defiled the sanctuary. This is attributed to his plots to plan persecutions. On the other hand, Caiaphas was married to Annas's daughter, and both families were wealthy and belonged to the aristocracy. Caiaphas was appointed high priest around 18 AD by Valerius Gratus, and his appointment marked a crucial point in the biblical narrative. Like his father-in-law Annas, Caiaphas assumed a leadership role in the Temple of Jerusalem and in the Jewish community at large. His relationship with Annas is interesting and significant. Even though Annas no longer held the position of high priest at the time, his influence was still palpable. By marrying Annas's daughter, 
Caiaphas became part of a priestly dynasty that maintained considerable control over religious and political affairs in Judea. One of Caiaphas's famous phrases in the biblical narrative occurred after Jesus raised Lazarus. The news that Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead reached the council, and at the council Caiaphas asked the famous question found in the Gospel of John chapter 11 verses 49 and 50. You know nothing, nor do you consider that it is expedient for us that a man die for the people, and not that the whole nation perish. This statement by Caiaphas referred to the belief that Jesus' death would prevent a revolt and protect the interests of the Jewish religious leadership. Caiaphas's statement was like a prophecy that Jesus would die for the entire nation, and not just for the nation, but also to gather into one the children of God who were dispersed. The biblical story narrates that after Caiaphas's declaration, everyone in the council agreed to kill Jesus. During Jesus's ministry, tensions between him and the Jewish religious leadership, represented mainly by Annas and Caiaphas, gradually increased. Jesus preached a religious reform that challenged some of the teachings and practices established by the religious leadership of his time, putting him in direct conflict with the religious authorities. It was in this context that Jesus was arrested and brought before the high priest for questioning. First Jesus was brought before Annas and then before Caiaphas who was acting as the high priest at the time. These interrogations marked a critical point in the biblical narrative. During the interrogations, Annas and Caiaphas sought evidence against Jesus to support accusations of blasphemy and sedition. However, Jesus mostly remained silent and offered no convincing defense. These interrogations led to the decision to send Jesus to the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate, to be tried and condemned. Importantly, Annas and Caiaphas played an active role in the decision to accuse Jesus and in pushing for him to be sentenced to death. Their political and religious influence greatly contributed to the subsequent crucifixion of Jesus on Mount Golgotha. After the resurrection of Jesus Christ, Caiaphas refused to accept the evidence that Jesus had risen. For this reason, he imprisoned and attempted to kill Peter and John, and later participated in the death of Stephen. Caiaphas also authorized Saul to arrest any Christians he found in Damascus. Caiaphas played a significant role in the persecution of the followers of Jesus, considering them a threat to the religious and political authority of the time. However, around 36 AD, Caiaphas was deposed by Vitellius, the Roman governor of Syria. At the same time, Pilate was also deposed. Finally, it is said that Caiaphas was miserably murdered and dragged away by the Romans during a Jewish revolt in the year 36 after Christ. The tomb of Caiaphas's family was discovered in 1990, while a road was being built in an old cave hidden on the slopes of Jerusalem. On the other hand, Annas died by banging his head against the walls after realizing that he had contributed to the death of the Messiah. As an additional note, Annas's grandson, the son of Theophilos, was appointed high priest by Agrippa II in 65 AD, succeeding Jesus of Gamala. He was the last high priest before the destruction of the Second Temple by the Romans in 70 AD, closely associated with the Temple in Jerusalem. As we conclude this exploration, we are reminded of the lasting impact that the decisions and actions of these two men had on history. Their roles in the narrative of Jesus' crucifixion are a testament to the complexities of life and the choices that shape destinies. Our hope is that this story serves as a reminder of the importance of our own actions and decisions and how they can resonate through time. We invite you to share this message so that others may also learn from this story. Leave your like and share your thoughts in the comments below. Let's create a space for reflection and learning together, exploring the events that shaped our world until the next video.